What's going on, guys? It's your main man Kev here. Today I'm doing a little bit of Bluetooth activation on my 2011 BMW 328i E90 chassis. I've already done all the hardware stuff done, which just involves wiring this microphone to the trunk com box, which my car comes pre-installed with. And I'll show you guys that in a sec. But first I'm gonna take you guys through the coding process. So I got my Beamer Geeks cable here. It's a, uh, you can, it's like $40. You can Google Beamer Geeks and it's the K plus D can cable. And it has a little switch here for K and D can. And uh, yeah, so uh, we're gonna put my key in here and uh, turn the ignition on by hitting the start stop button once. The software you're gonna wanna make sure you have on your laptop is called the BMW Standard Tools. And uh, you can find the latest versions of that on the BMW uh, or Beamer Geeks website. And you can look up how to uh, install that online there. And uh, yeah, so we're going to plug this cable in to the car, the OBD2 port. And it's plugged into the USB port on the computer. And uh, now we can go to Device Manager and make sure that it shows up as a COM1 device. We can see it's COM1 here. So let's go to Properties, Port Settings. You can see that it's COM1. All oh, that's correct. But we're going to go to Advanced here and make sure that we set the latency timer to one millisecond. And uh, yeah, that's all good here. So we're going to hit OK and then close these guys out. And then we're going to go uh, load up the IMPA software and uh, this isn't really used for coding or anything like that, but we're just gonna be checking to make sure that those two dots are on. And then we're gonna read the airbag information to make sure that we're getting, getting communications. So uh, we're gonna hit, make it a warning that says language of variants don't match when you select your chassis. But uh, yeah, but that's okay. So uh, we're gonna go to read status. So we're gonna go to F5 and then uh, F5 again to read buckle status. So that's something easy to do here. And uh, you can see that both are attached, but neither of them are plugged in. So we're gonna try plugging the passenger buckle and it should change from no to yes for getting proper communication. And uh, bang, okay, cool. So uh, change, so beautiful. We can close up IMPA here and uh, yes, we wanna quit there. So now we're gonna load up NCS Expert. I have already coded Bluetooth into my car because factory. My options are CIC iDrive with a medium com box unit in the trunk. And I have voice control, which means I already have a microphone, which is good. But I did not have Bluetooth enabled. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do here. So as you guys can see here, I have the telephone options activated now, which was not available before I coded and uh, looks just like factory here. So that's great. So uh, back to NCS Expert, we're going to load a profile and we're going to go to factory coding because we're not doing manipulation or anything. We're just doing something that they would have done in the factory here. So we're going to hit start down at the bottom and we're going to enter our, enter our chassis information. E90 uses E89 and we're going to use the CAS unit to uh, grab all the data. It reads the VIN and the FA codes which just shows all of your factory options. And they are the dollar sign plus three digit code that tells the options that we have from the factory. So to add Bluetooth, oh, got a select chassis again, VIN's good. So to add Bluetooth, we're gonna wanna add dollar sign 644. And this gives you hand-free phone, hands-free phone and Bluetooth. It's the factory option. We'd hit add, but I've done that already. So uh, the option's already there. And that's the only option I've added to do this. And it's the only one you need to do. So we're going to close out of that since I've already done it. And after you do that, all right, so we're back. Um, so after you add your VO code to the FA settings, you're going to want to do an FA write on the CAS unit. And you're going to want to do that on the NFRM unit as well. So we're gonna do CAS, hit OK, and then we're gonna to wanna to go to change job and then FA write, and then you'd hit OK. 
and you see the job name change there, and then you're gonna execute the job. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again, but that's the process there. And then you're gonna to go to NFRM also, hit okay, job name is the same, and then you're gonna execute the job again. And that's what that does is load those new vehicle options into those two main ECUs that kind of tell all the other ECUs what's going on. And uh, that's important to do that. So now that we've done that, we can go to the CIC unit and then hit OK. And then we're going to change job on this. And then we're going to go to the SG Coderin. And we're going to select that there. And then you're going to execute, execute the job there. And what that's going to do is that's going to code all the factory options in that we've just coded, that's gonna tell that CIC unit that it is working properly. So after you do this, you're gonna see your radio and iDrive screen reboot once, but uh, it won't be working yet because we have not uh, coded the media control unit yet. So we're gonna do that now. So we're gonna to go to change ECU and then go to the media unit and then hit okay. And then we're gonna do a SG Coderin again, and then execute job, and then you do that again, and uh, that's all you have to do to code, and your Bluetooth will be enabled at this point. All right, guys, so uh, we're sort of on step two of this Bluetooth tutorial, and uh, yeah, so uh, the second part is after you do all the coding and you get it activated on the iDrive system and working properly. The installed microphone from the factory, because I have the uh, voice recognition option, normally the microphone would be routed to your head unit in the dash for the voice control function. However, when you activate Bluetooth, all that's controlled by the media unit in the trunk. So we're going to have to run some cabling to the uh, to that media box in the trunk. So what you're going to need to do is, there's this white connector down below where the glove box is, kind of by the fuse box. This is a factory wiring harness. And it normally has a male input onto that right there. But what you want to do is you want to unplug that male end and you can cut the wires off the male end there. The wires that go into the male end are these black and yellow ones right here. You want to cut those off. And then we're just going to grab some generic speaker cabling and uh, use the butt connectors and attach that cabling to those wires. So a little demonstration here on uh, what I cut and uh, where the connectors are and everything like that. So uh, I used 18 gauge speaker wire that was spliced onto the yellow and black wires and I use butt connectors because I don't have a uh, access to a power outlet for soldering so you take that wire and you run it through the trunk and uh, we're gonna go over to the trunk here and I'm gonna show you guys how I splice the cables on the comm box in the trunk here so here's that male end connector I mentioned earlier and normally we have some shielded wires and these it still has this connector on it, which is useful because we're going to use this to pin the wires onto the media unit. So normally, let's set this camera down here. So normally these wires just kind of slot into the connectors. This little fin is plugged into there and it lines up with the hole there. And when you slide in, you're going to hear a click two clicks to be precise and it's locked in there there's a little metal fin that pokes up and that prevents you from pulling the wire back out so we're going to repurpose these from the front part under the glove box and uh, we're going to be using these pins again for the media unit Just take something sharp and pointy and wedge it in there so you can get these wires out. And you fold up that tab there and uh, then you poke the other part, the second click there. And then uh, after you push that fin down, the wire just pulls right out. And uh, after you do that, you'll have three of these wires. 
you'll have a positive and negatives in the shield. So you have an extra one to work with in case one breaks or something like that. So we're going to take out the trunk liner and set it to the side. And uh, now you have access to the media unit back here, the silver guy right here. And uh, in the back, you're going to want to unbolt all these four bolts on each corner of this device so you can pull it out and have easier access to the wiring harness. And you're going to want to remove all the cables from the front carefully and make sure not to damage anything. There's a 26-pin connector back there, and you're going to want to take that out and slide out the long rectangular connector. It kind of looks like this, but a bit longer. And pins 12 and 25 are the microphone pins. So you want to use these pins that we salvaged from the other male connector. Oh, those pins. Here's the wire, wiring diagram I'm referring to. So we take pin 25 for the positive microphone cable. So you'll route that to the yellow cable under the dash. And then you'll route pin 12 to the black cable under the dash because it's the negative microphone cable. You can go ahead and pin those in to the pins on the back of the control unit. And uh, the wiring harness on the back of the control unit does have numbers so you can refer to the pin numbers and make sure that you're wiring it accurately. So yeah, again, you just plug those straight up into there and then use that speaker wire. And I use some more butt connectors. and. Uh, crimped it together really nice and run it up to the dash and then your microphone works. I verified with this with my buddy last night and uh, we were able to communicate over the phone and everything like that. So all that's left now is to install a uh, antenna and uh, that is connected through this white connector right here. This is a female SMB plug. And the antenna, you can buy the antenna online. It's just a factory BMW antenna, Bluetooth antenna. I bought mine from FCP Euro. Um, you can buy used ones, but used ones are honestly about the same price as a new one, so you might as well just go buy a new one. For example, I got a 20-foot uh, uh, spool of this SMB cable for about $20 on Amazon, so that's definitely way cheaper than the Fokker cable. And I'm going to run it to the factory location under the driver's side panel under the steering wheel above the pedals. I'm going to show you guys that here real quick. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope this tutorial was helpful. Take care.